um, before I start, um, can I have all the fathers stand up in the room? Woo-hoo! All right. Well, happy Father's Day. I, I tell you, be, stay, stay, keep standing because I want to pray over you guys real quick. And I'm feeling led to do this. If not, I'm, this is a good idea. I think I'm participating with the Holy Spirit. But um, what a good thing... Um, being a father is, and I and I I, I love my wife, and, and and but when my daughter was born, there's a different love that came into my heart. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is this? And it's just so whether you're a son or a daughter, and I just fell in love with my kids and stuff, and and boy, and I and I was a broken father, but God wasn't broken, and God helped me through it. And my kids today are. Um, running to God, and so I want to talk to some of the parents. If you have some prodigals out there, they're coming home. God, that's why I'm. I, no, I'm saying the Lord told me to say this. They're coming home. God's word does not come back void. God's word does not come back void. And there's young kids, fathers with young kids. They have destiny and purpose. And fathers, you show that pers- purpose to them. You show that love to them. You show them the good father by looking through you guys. So what a good day to talk about the good father. Amen. So blessing over you and all the fathers in this room. Father God, we thank you that you're not done with us. You're not done with our children. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You guys can sit down now. I am so fired up about this this message that I got a lot of scripture I'm going to read, and I'm going to read it excellent, and I'm going to just declare it, but nine pages of notes. I'm not really a note taker, but I'm so excited because the good father, and you guys, you guys heard my story of like, you know, my own father, and so God became, called me son at an early age of my Christian walk, and so he's my daddy God, you know, he's just, he's just who, who I am, and I think if I didn't know him as daddy God, I would have backslidden, I would have fell apart. I just would have just never made it. I made tons of mistakes. I've, I've hurt people. I've made mistakes in everything I've done with my wife, my children, with my people, both in business and ministry. I'm not there yet, but my daddy God is not done with me yet. Amen? So if that's you too, sometimes we look at ourselves so differently than the father looks at us, right? So I want to talk about the good father. He's a good God, and he's our father. So I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures. These are some of them um, that are just kind of ones in my heart. I, I, if you guys notice, I quote a lot of scriptures. It's because, not because I um, memorize them. I don't, it's because I pray them. That's the safest prayer. Just pray scripture over you. Pray the word of God over you. It never comes back void. So I just pray a lot. So I pray like scriptures. But here's some good scriptures I have. So I'm going to read them to you. Psalms 23, 6. Surely the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalms 20, 27, 13. I would have lost heart unless I would have believed that you would, I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That is such a powerful scripture. Okay, I'm not talking about these scriptures. I'm just trying to talk about how good our God is. In the land of the living. I've heard people say, I can't wait to get to heaven. I can't wait to see what God's going to do here on earth. I can't wait to see what he's going to do in me and you. I can't wait to see what he's going to do in the land of the living. That means now. Amen? And then it says in Psalms, he goes, in Psalms 34, 8, it says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is a man who trusts in him. Wow, he is so good. He's so good. And this is the neat thing about it, as we know how good God is. The, the devil looks, the devil is working overtime to, to, to blame everything on God. He comes against, comes, comes against everything. So often, some, some, of, some of the things that we go through, we're blaming God for, and it's not true. As a matter of fact, it's a lie. We're going to talk about that because sometimes we get frustrated with God because we don't understand his word or we don't understand because the feelings and emotions and the pressure gets up there. We begin to say, God, why is this happening to me? But he's so good and he's so perfect. So let me give a scripture behind it. James 1.17. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the father of lights whom there is no variation or shadow or turning. That's saying every good gift, every perfect from God. Anything else is not of God. You say, but Chris, there's tests and trials. Yeah, this is a broken world, and we're broken people sometimes, but that's, that does not come from God. So that gives us hope. That gives us hope that God's not done with us. That gives us hope to know that he's so good. But if we don't know our father's good, and we think he's mad at us, because I was taught it, this, when I was raised in this type of religion when I was a kid, that if I mess up, God's mad at me. And I might not make it to heaven. So every time I made a mistake, then I have a chance to go to hell. I got a chance that God's mad at me. 
I literally, I literally was, my, my, my mom was that way. And I remember Brittany being about one years old, one and a half years old, maybe two, probably two. And, and when you come to our house, we don't move candy dishes. We don't move anything. Our kids touch the candy dishes they're not supposed to. They're going to get that or that if they keep doing it or that if they keep doing it. And then they stop. I can remember Brittany, we had a, a brand new stereo and she's, and I could see her and, and one and a half years old, she, she's not in the room, but one and a half years old and you could see her, she, she's got, her hands were red a few times and, and she went up and she wanted to touch the stereo because she was not allowed to touch the stereo and she looked for, one and a half, I mean, she wasn't, one. she was, just, she looks, and she starts doing all that. I'm telling you, it was just the truth. So, um, she went over to my mom's house, and my mom always had candy on the things and all these little things. And so um, she, kept, she, she kept doing it. My mom would just take everything, and she started sticking everything on the shelf. I said, Mom, don't do that. We don't do that. Don't do it here. We don't do it at home. Don't do that. And then one time, one time she, she did something, and she, she, she did something specifically wrong. She's about two, two and a half years. And I spanked her. And I spanked her, and I said, I love you. And I, I, I spanked her, and, and, I did. And, and my mom goes, this is, this is a true story. My mom goes, we're very opinionated and we're very direct. We don't, that's the way I was raised. We don't, she goes, you make me sick. How could you do that? You spank her, you spank her, and then you kiss her and love her and say you love her. You're confusing her, Chris. What, what's wrong with you? I said, no, 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 mom. You don't know the love of God. You didn't know that. That's what you did with me. You wouldn't talk to me for a week. You would tell me I was no good and I couldn't hear from you a week. I said, but that's not what God taught me. God taught me he loves me and I had to love my daughter. She, she started crying and she gave her life to the Lord. Oh, she might have recommitted because I think she gave her life to the Lord when she was younger and she gave her life back to the Lord. That, it broke her. The anointing fell upon her and I said it just those direct. I said, no, mom, that's not true. You, you, my ma, my ma tried to kill me with electric current. My ma rejected me because she was so mad at me. So I was just like my father who was broken, who, who abused her. So she took her hurt and she puts it on other people. And we do that in our lives, believe me. But, so that was just amazing. She says, no. And so, she, so, so she knows. And then she, before she died, she had cancer. She died in 1994. Before she died, she had a dream. She goes, I had a dream. Um, that I seen your son. I was, I didn't, we weren't planning to have a kid. She goes, I think you're going to have a son. Or, I, I, could see, I think you're going to be in Mexico. And I, I, so I seen you and your son in Mexico. Well, we had real close friends that were in Mexico, so she probably put two or two together. But she's seen the Lord. To, but, and she goes, I seen you with my, your son. Never had a son. Well, when um, Christian was 13, we spent a whole two weeks in, in Africa. And that's when he was, she, so she'd seen Africa in her vision or what God showed her. She thought it was Mexico because we had friends that were in Mexico. She did that. That's my mom. And she's in heaven this day and I can't wait to go see my mom again. Not yet. God's not done with me, but, but there'll be a time. So the Bible says God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son. This is what the good, good father does. He gave Jesus. He gave it all. So part of God, part of the Trinity, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Jesus, came down as man for us. And we celebrate Christmas about the baby in the manger, but he came to die. You think about Christmas, he came to die. He had one purpose, to come to die for us, to be the ultimate, the lamb, to reconcile us back to the Father. Jesus says this in um, John 14, 9. I do talk fast a lot, but I'm trying to be, but I got a lot to say, so, I'm, so if, 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 if I will try to slow down, but um, talking fast, but not making sense is foolish. Talking f- a little faster. So I'm at 1.5 maybe, you know, because I listen to books that way. Anybody listen to books? I listen to books. I like 1.5. It, it kind of coincides with my personality. I can make it. You go too fast. And it's like, but if you slow, 1.5, I can listen to books, and that's cool. So anyways, and so I'm just giving you a, um, what's going to happen because I got a lot of scripture. I feel led to read these scriptures. Plus, it's going to help my reading skills. So Jesus, it's just as John 14, 9, says, Jesus said to him, I've been with you. This is when Peter goes, I haven't even seen, excuse me, um, Philip goes, I haven't even seen the Father. And here's what Jesus' response to him. Jesus said to him, have you been, I've been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? I mean, that, that was a loving rebuke to um, Philip. He said, what do you mean? I've been there so long. Think about this. Everything Jesus did on earth before he went to the cross, how he loved people, how he moved with compassion, how he didn't think and see people differently. Think about this. I, he, that was the Father leading him through the Holy Spirit. 
Think about that. Think about that. Think about Judas, who was stealing money, had a problem with money, yet me, I'd be sitting there like, oh, hey, hey, guys. You know, he doesn't say a word because he knew his destiny. He knew what the Father had for him. He knew his disciples would betray him and, 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 and deny him. Not betray him, but, you know, but he knew that one. And I, I couldn't do it right now. But you know what? Through the Holy Spirit, maybe I can. We build up walls and we build up situations in our life. We build up things because we've been hurt. So we can't trust people. We can't do it. But through the Holy Spirit, we can learn to love people like Christ loved the church. And this is the true love. So when we see God, we see Jesus, we see the God, the Father. Luke 12, 32 says this. Do not fear, little, Jesus says this. Do not fear, little flock. For it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. To give you the kingdom. Think about that. The kingdom. It is so important that we know our identity. That he's the, he, we are sons and daughters of God. It's so important. We talked about that. Scott talked about that yesterday at the men's group. But it's so important. It's identity. Sons and daughters of God. He's a good father with sons and daughters. But sometimes when we don't understand things, we become slaves or we become servants. Sometimes we get caught in, and we, and every time we make a mistake or every time we come short, we pull away from God. And what are we doing? We're acting like a servant. We're acting like a servant. I'm, so, I'm glad my, little, my kids, when I was disciplining them, um, they still come running in my arms. Why are we pulling away from God when we make a mistake? Why are we pulling away from God when we can't? Because we're, lying, we're being lied to and we're acting like slaves or servants. And that's where bondage comes in. If you come short, his, his grace is sufficient. Jump in the Father's arm. And I learned that. I had to learn that when I was abusive to my wife. I had to learn that. You know. And by the way, when that, that five years of our journey, we've led hundreds of people into the Lord. We're trying to make people perfect. And if you're not perfect, Scott, then I have a... You, you got to love people right where they're at. So I'm finding out, as, as, I, as the Holy Spirit's working in me, I have so many of my, I'm, of my own ideas what I should do. The more I run to the Father, and the more I run through the Holy Spirit, I'm learning how to love people in spite of me, in spite of them sometimes. If you're going to love someone that's so easy to love, what does Jesus say about that? He says, love your enemies. It's easy to love your friends. This is what I'm talking about when we're talking about the Father, because Jesus says, if you see me, you see the Father. So look at the Our Father, the prayer itself. We talk about it's his good pleasure to give his kingdom. He says this. My, my, you know, he goes, Jesus, how do you pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is God's pleasure and the heavenly Father's pleasure to bring his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. That's what, this is what we're designed for as believers. This is what we're called to. This is our mandate to bring kingdom living and walk in kingdom living, kingdom victory for everyday life. The problem is we all believe we have, we have to walk in kingdom living, but we got to walk in kingdom freedom and kingdom love and kingdom power. We've got to understand that. So how do you do that? I believe it's through the Holy Spirit. It's the only way. We think of Jesus as God. We think of Jesus as God. He was God, but he came down as man. And everything Jesus did, he did through the Holy Spirit and power. Everything. He still had the same, he was still man. He was God, it, it came down in flesh. That's why they call him the son of God. They call him the son of man. So he was God, but he operated through the Holy Spirit and power. He wasn't, so, so what, what's that mean, Chris? What are you saying? What's your point? That means we can operate the same as Jesus operated and through the Holy Spirit and power. And Jesus even said, he says, the works that I do, greater works that you'll do because I go to my father. Jesus also says, I'm going to be raised up in heaven. I'm, I'm going to be sitting at the right hand of the Father. Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus is raised up by the uh, right hand of the Father, interceding for us, that we can walk in that victory and that freedom. The Bible says that we're more than conquerors because Jesus conquered. He conquered, so we're more than conquerors because we get to receive everything that Jesus has done. This is where the church is going to have to wake up and say, man, that's so true. But we get tripped over every circumstance and every situation. So I love this one, and, and this is this one, and I, I was just going to read, like, you know, he talks about if a father asks, you know, about, um, if a father asks for uh, bread from any father among you, but I want to go further, a few verses back, I love this, it says this, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given, it will be given to you, excuse me, ask, and it will be given to you, seek, and you will find, knock, and it will be opened to you, for anyone who asks 
receives, anyone who seeks will find, and anyone who knocks, it will be open to you. That is Jesus' word. You seek, you find, you knock. That's his word. And then look how he keeps moving on. Then he goes this, he goes, so anyone who seeks, asks for find, to him knocks, be open. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a serpent instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will you offer him a scorpion? Then he goes, if you being evil, knowing how to give good gifts to your children, let's talk about being evil. What are you saying? Being natural, just being in your own understanding, not being spiritual. You being evil, knowing to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit for those who ask him? Wow. Wow. Think about that. You know, I heard this speaker, or this, um, this preacher talk, and he says, sometimes we think that we're, we're human, hum, we live in a human realm trying to be more spiritual. But the reality is, we're, if you're in Christ, you're a spiritual being living in a, in a natural world, living in a natural thing. But we're trying to do the other way because that's the wrong thinking sometimes. We're, we're trying, we're, we think we're natural people trying to get spiritual, trying to do spiritual things. That's not true. The truth is, when you're in Christ, spirit dwells in you, the Holy Spirit. You are a spiritual being, being dealing with all this natural crap that we have to deal with. I said crap, but it is crap, right? Anybody else think some of the crap that we have to go through? I mean, let's just get real. I don't think that's too bad, but um, I think it's that. Sometimes I like to call it worse than that, but anyways, I'll keep it PG. Um, I, I like that John 14, 16 says this, and I will pray, this is, I will pray that the Father, I, I will pray that the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Wow. Let me keep reading, because he's going to explain who's the helper, right? So he keeps going, John 14, 26, if you keep reading. Just a, this a little segue. If you just want to get stirred up and you're just kind of struggling through life, read 14, 15, 16, and 17 of John. I could read that. You could, you could have a goal to do that every month, if you will. It's, it's just four chapters. It's, I, I think my, my, one of my favorite Bible teachers, Andrew Womack, says that's the Christian survival kit. Just read those scriptures because that's when Jesus is going to the cross. He talks about being your heart, being troubled. Then he goes all the way through as he prays for us. And so everything he says in there, that's for us today. So, so John... Um, so John 14, 16, excuse me, um, he says, John 14, 26 says this, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all things that I say to you. Wow. You know what? That scripture is amazing. But sometimes, sometimes when we're struggling, sometimes when our back's against the wall, sometimes when en enemies throw darts at us, sometimes when we don't know what we're doing, we forget that the Holy Spirit can bring words of memory if we're pursuing God, if we're seeking God. Sometimes, sometimes me and Lisa, sometimes we're like, just to be honest, we've we just been so catching ourselves so often. Sometimes I just want to go home and shut down, eat some food, watch a show, and just shut my mind off. That only works until the movie's over, and then my mind picks right back up and I'm going back. And me and Lisa, like you said, we don't have time for this. We don't have time for this. We need to be pursuing God like never before. You're going to see a difference in me and Lisa. I'm declaring it from every one of you guys seeing the difference. We're not going to be perfect. We're not going to be, we're not, but we're going to see, you're going to see a difference for us because we know where God's calling us and he's calling us. And we're doing a series in, um, in, in, in July sometime, Flesh and Spirit. And God's showing us how often that we think it's God or we, we, we're sowing more to the flesh than the spirit. And it's time for the church to wake up and say, man, Holy Spirit, have your way with us. Literally, literally, I love to pray. I'm just sharing some examples. I love to pray and stuff like that. And, 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 and this, I'll save that for a minute when I get down there because I have so much to say. Um, here's another scripture for um, John 16 says, however, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you the things to come. He will glorify me for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the father has are mine, therefore I say he will take what's mine and declare it to you. So now we're talking about the good father. It's always been the father's plan through Jesus. He goes, whatever is mine is the father's and I'm gonna give it to you. Jesus has given us authority. Jesus has given it all. Jesus is finished. We're completing Christ. And we have to know, we have to understand that. So I feel like there's so much we can go on in that. That could just be in, a, that scripture could be just a whole message itself. But I, I feel like the, where, where the Holy Spirit was leading me today to encourage you is, in three things, power, love, and a sound mind. 
That's, let's see if we can walk away with a little nuggets today, just a power love and a sound mind through the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. Because the enemy is trying to make the church powerless. How does the church get powerless? When, we, when, we th- when we're using our intellect, we're losing what our own understanding, when we're starting to make up things or we're trying to make things or we're tolerating things or what, what, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're just trying to do it in our own strength and relying on our own self. No, it's the Holy Spirit power. It's his anointing that breaks the yoke. It's his anointing to make our crooked ways straight. It's his anointing that gives us that power. Acts, Acts 1.8, we know that Jesus, is, Jesus says, don't leave Jerusalem. Do not leave Jerusalem. But he says, this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. If we're called, the guy wants to give us his kingdom, so often, so often sometimes, and this, I'm guilty of this, so if you guys are too, just repent with me. I want God's kingdom to come and bless me. I want God's come to kingdom to strengthen me. I want God's kingdom to bless my family, to bless my business, or bless what I put my hands to. And when that doesn't work quite right, or I'm going through struggles, I forget all about his people. Now, because I'm on staff, I have to get my stuff together and, and show up. But no, I love to show up. Do you, know, do you know that this is the best part of my life is to encourage others? I've learned that. Like when I'm down and out, if I sit there and suck my thumb, I'm going to drown. I go, I'll call someone, go minister some, go encourage somebody. And I will preach when I'm walking out. I will encourage when I'm walking out. And I get, faith comes by hearing the word of God. You, we have our own choices to get out of our own mess. We're waiting to God to get out of our own mess, to kind of do a little glory dust on us and all of a sudden we're all of a sudden all free and everything's working perfectly the truth is we have that power we have that power that's on us to say no we're not going to behave this way no we're not going to think this way no devil you have no authority in my life we come against that lie no i'm not a failure i just failed i just made a mistake i'm not a failure i tell you even even in this thing like you guys heard me about my business i made a mistake you know i can't tell you what the mistake was i didn't do like this i didn't do one major mistake i just just i just i just it's just part of life the economy um having all your eggs and big one big customers but i made a but my business got struggled you guys heard about it. i said i got walked away from shame and all that but you know and that after that shame was on me i i had to retrain my thoughts and my hearts because i thought differently I was like, well, I, I made a mistake. I let my father down, and he blessed this business like crazy. So I'll just take, I'll just take a little nugget. God showed me what he had planned for. He said, he goes, he goes, because he, he knows our hearts and minds. He goes, you've seen prosperity. You haven't seen wealth yet. But now because I screwed up a little, because I made a mistake, I don't know exactly. And my mistake was I knew God had an answer. God knows my future before I know it. He has a plan for me, and he has a plan for you. But I, have, I wasn't listening to that. So that's my mistake. I wasn't drawn near to God every day of my life. You go, Chris, you're talking about works. I'm talking about living in Christ with the Holy Spirit and power every single day of your life. And if you think you can take a week off, you're sadly mistaken. You cannot do that. He loves you. He loves me. We can't play church. We are, li- are, we, are we spiritual beings learn how to walk it out? No, I'm not yelling at you guys because I'm yelling at you guys. I'm yelling at you guys because I love you guys. And I'm like, I'm learning this. I'm like, oh my gosh. But literally guys start showing me because I'm like, Okay, if we just got there, if we just can get by, we just can get by. If we just can make these things work, that'd be okay. That's a poverty spirit and that does not come from God. Think about what God has for each one of us. There's people that have been wounded in relationships and, and they can't even live the freedom anymore because they can't get healed of that relationship or the wounds from the past and they're just, it's sucking the life out of them. God wants you healed. He wants you delivered. He wants you free. He wants you living because he's a good, good, good father. Amen? Amen? He says this, he says this in um, 1 Corinthians. He says, and Paul talks about this. He goes, my, he goes, and my speech and my preaching were not a precise words of human wisdom, but demonstration of the spirit and of power. Dem- of this demonstration of spirit and power. So even the Holy Spirit, you can walk in power, but the Holy Spirit can even give you the right thoughts and the right things. Amen? It says this in um, 1 Corinthians 25, 22, 5. If you keep reading, it says, and it goes, so, that your faith shall not be in wisdom of man, but in the power of God. So often, we hear something. We hear something like, Dan's going to die 16 years ago. And I remember that. I remember that quickly because she was working for us. You were in, that, in, in, in the prayer room. And, and 
And, and, and she goes, she goes I, I was told that he's got 24 hours to live. It's going to happen. And Jamie Grinwood says, she kind of started crying. She goes, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Who's going to join me? He's going to live and not die. I just don't believe it. You remember that? You don't? Yeah, you, you worked for us for a little while. Okay, okay. Come on, let me convince you. No, I'm just, <laughs> okay. Anyway, she said that. And, okay. And he is going to go home when, he, when God can take him home. You're still here. And by the way, my life has been changed because you're in my life. Right. And me and you have different personalities, but the way you love God's people and the way you love people, you, just, you inspire me. My life has been changed because of you. And I'm honored to call you my friend and my partner because we're, we're elders together. That's right. I'm telling you. Yeah. I, I love you so much, Dan. You, I just want you to know how much I love you. You're an inspiration for all of us. Not to give up. You hear stories when he was sick the first time. He crawled, played music when he was on the worship team. Crawled, sat on the chair, played music. I guess Kevin said sometimes he just did the best he could. Crawled back to bed when he was on his deathbed. He would still, if he, because he was signed up for the worship team, he showed up. We can't even show up consistently at church. And this man's dying and he crawls up on the thing and plays his guitar and then goes home. What an inspiration. We honor you. We love you. You're amazing, Dan. <laughs> what songs was he playing? He said, they were bad. <laughs> but he showed up. So no one said a word to him. They were inspired. <laughs> Romans 8 39 says this, oh, excuse me. Eight, Romans 5, 5 says this. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of, oh, excuse me. Second thing we talked about power, love, and the sound mind. I'm going to talk about love for a few minutes now. And I'm trying to get this done, so bear with me. Um, um, so let's talk about love. It says, Romans 5, 5 says this. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out, us, uh, poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has get, been given to us. He, he, God's talking about his love. we got to know that God loves us. He has the best plan for us. So his way is the only way because he loves us. And he says it's because he poured it out because he's given us the Holy Spirit. The biggest love story was obviously Jesus coming down. But after that, he's given us the Holy Spirit. He goes, I'm not going to leave you orphans. I'm going to give you a helper. God never expects us to live a victorious life without the Holy Spirit. He expects us to depend on the Holy Spirit, seek the Holy Spirit, rely on the Holy Spirit, walk with the Holy Spirit, listen to the Holy Spirit, yield to the Holy Spirit, be empowered by the Holy Spirit, be strengthened by the Holy Spirit, be anointed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's our friend, and he is becoming one of my best friends ever. And he is telling me how short I'm coming in such a love. We don't want to look how short we're coming. You're all short in some areas, and that's not condemning. The Holy Spirit wants to help you, so you don't stay there. If I'm thinking wrong or behaving wrong, I want the Holy Spirit to help me so I don't keep doing it over and over and over again. Because if once you know God's love, you'll never get mad at him again. Once you know God's love, you'll never get discouraged at him again. Once you know God's love, you'll never fear like you used to fear again. Because perfect love casts out fear, and he is love, and he is perfect. That's his word. That's his truth. Matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Romans 8.39 says, nor, death, nor, de um, nor height, nor death, nor other created things shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's a longer scripture. I just snuck the last part of it because I, I have some time. But nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing, including yourself. You can't separate yourself away from the love of God. You can't make a mistake that's too big for God. You can't screw up too big for God. You can't do it. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. But when we make mistakes, we come short, we get frustrated, we think God has left us. He never left us. He's always been there. Amen? It, 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 is this hitting home for anybody? I'm getting all excited. As you can tell, I start talking fast and louder and louder. Ephesians um, 3.19 says this, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. What a powerful scripture. It, that know means intimacy, to know like um, 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 Adam knew Eve. Intimacy, to know his love. Not talk about it. Oh, when we learn that when we're little kids, Jesus loves you, this I know, the Bible tells you so. But when you know his love, when you experience that love, don't, don't ever forget it. But the enemy so often knocks us around and we forget that love. We start to doubt. We start to forget that love. When you know God's love, don't ever let it 
ever leave your mind and your heart. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will bring it back in your remembrance. How much he loves you. You know when it's hard? To, um, you know when, when you forget about that love? is when you're not loving others. Because they didn't do what you want them to do. Or they didn't say what they should have done. Or they did that. Wow. And I'm guilty of it. So please love me. Because anybody in the room I've hurt, just please love me. I'm on the same journey as you are. Man, think about that. Think about that. You know how often you see someone who's not saved? They can spit in your face. They can talk behind your back. And you're like, you're like you just love them anyways. Cause, oh, cause, but a brother or sister does a little thing wrong. And oh my gosh, Scott, you know what so-and-so did. Or you know what so-and-so do. And you just get all upset. And you think about it all night long. No, I'm just the only one. Okay, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Come on. This is the truth. And let's just get free in that. What are we doing? This is just foolish. If you, did I call you foolish? No, I said, that's foolish. If you're doing that, then you could be foolish. I'm just saying, because I know I've been foolish because I've done that. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to walk in that love. I want to love. I don't wanna, so you know what I do when I start getting that way? I pray for that person every day, five or six times a day for weeks and months. That's why I love your daughter. She prayed for her friend for 30 days. Way to go. By the way, that young lady has a big plan in her life. And God, I can't wait to see what God has for her. I'm going to end, I'm gonna, my last one is about sound mind. And um, this is the most, I mean, obviously the love of God is the most empowered, our most important, but the sound mind is where I think a lot of us get tripped up on. It's our thoughts. It's not our hearts. I mean, I could look in the room. I almost know every one of you personally or met you and know you. I mean, I mean, our heart, we wouldn't be here today if our hearts wasn't for the Lord, but our minds will knock us around. A man thinking his heart's so easy. You start thinking garbage, you'll become garbage. You start thinking like a slave, you become a slave. You start thinking like a hater, you become a hater. You start thinking like a fearful person, you'll become fearful. Think about the power of the mind. So it says, says this, it says, um, um, 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So fear can so often destroy the, how we're thinking. It can try to um, thwart, is that the word? Um, or, or destroy, or just, yeah, that's... Thor, okay, good. Way to go. I love it. I can hang around Kevin. I'll get smarter just talking to Kevin. But this, this the way we think, it can just, do, it just can just, this can just pervert the way we're thinking because fear comes in. And, 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 and fear has now become a medical condition and we can have drugs to do it. And I believe that to keep the body healthy, but it's not a long-term solution. There's no cure for fear other than the spirit of the Lord because he calls it a spirit. So med medication can't fix it. It can help it so you don't destroy your body, but it's only temporal. God wants to bring healing to people that are stuck in fear and anxiety. He wants to do that. You know, you hear me say that all the time. You know why? Because God has called me to the church to help people walk out of fear because I'm trying to walk it out. And I'm telling you, it's not okay. It's like if someone came in my house and tried to hurt my wife or if my family was there, they could get in very, very trouble. They probably could die because I do have a, a handgun in my um, bed throw. You ain't going to come and take care of my, you know. Now, if you want to um, persecute me for the Lord's sake, that's fine. But some idiot ain't going to come and try to destroy my family. I'm going to protect it. Why don't we do that spiritually? Some idiot wants to come and lie to us and bring fear and anxiety into our homes, into our minds, and start destroying the way we're thinking about ourselves and our situations. So we're reacting in the flesh instead of responding by the Spirit of God. Why don't we say, no more, Satan. This does not come from you. You can't have me. You're not, you're not going to lie. Fear go from me right now. I'm not having it in Jesus' name. Isaiah 26.3 says, he, you, will, you, you, will, you will keep him in perfect peace. He's talking about God. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind stayed on you because he trusts in you. Think about that. It's so important. It's so important that we know that we got to have our mind on God. And I'll go to Proverbs 3, 5, 7. You notice I quote that every time I'm up here? Because it's still, it's, if you can make anything, remember this scripture and say it to yourself every day. Proverbs 3, 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. He keeps going, but I didn't write that. He says, do not be wise in your life. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. This is, God is telling me daily, lean on your understanding. But I meditate a lot. I'm thinking, thinking about work, thinking about church, thinking about ministry, thinking about people, thinking about me and Lisa, thinking about my tomorrow. I like to do it. I, I meditate all the time. I like to think. I'm a thinker. Well, if I'm, if I'm not thinking God's way. So let's go back to that, that, that scripture. Acknowledge him in all your ways. How do you acknowledge him in all your ways? It's through his word. It's through his word. It's, 
nothing else is true. It's not your opinion. It's not your feelings. It's not your emotions. It's not your, it's, it's, it's like, can I be really blunt? Everybody gives me a friend. It's not about your opinion. It's about God's truth. If he's truly God, he's truly Savior, if he's truly King, it's about him. It's about his ways. So the way we acknowledge God is it through his word, through his truth. So, so I have to come back when my mind's going all over. I have to get into his word. I have to get into his word and say, God, what does your word say about this? Sometimes I bring my Bible and I don't read it because I have all, all printed out. But think about it. What is it? What in your word? Think about that. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it says, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bring in every thought and captivity and obedience to Christ. Think about that. What's exalting over, what in your mind today that's exalting something that does not line up with God's word and God's truth? How would you know if you don't know his word? And so ask somebody till you know his word. That's why this word, when I read the word and I seek God in his word, I don't do it as a religious duty. I do like, oh my gosh, I need to know it. That's why you can read this Bible every year and still get something out of it. You can read a scripture every day. How many times have you heard a scripture? Someone gets up here and, and you hear a scripture. I'm like, oh man, that's good. I didn't see it that way. I could read a scripture to every one of you and I could get 10 people say different things that God showed them about that scripture because it's alive. It's, it, the Holy Spirit can bring it alive and bring it alive into our hearts. Is that powerful? And it says this in Romans 12 too. Ben can come up. It says Romans 12 too. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind that you may approve what is the good, the statue perfect will of God. Paul's telling them, if you, read, if you go to um, Romans 12, 1, if you want to carry that story, he goes, I beseech you, I urge you, brothers, to present yourself a, a, living, a sac living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is, by re which is reasonable, he says, wholly acceptable to God. Then he says not be conformed. God's calling the church to be set apart. He's calling the church to be a set apart. He's, this is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about works. I'm talking about saying, nope, I'm choosing today to be set apart. And I'm only going to do it God's way. I choose today to not let my thoughts and my mind wander and flop all over the place. I choose to go back to God's word, acknowledge in my situation, find out what's going on. If you don't know what to do in your situation, I can tell you, there's a lot. Of, uh, just come and see me. See some of the leadership. See your brother and sister that can help you. Because there's the word, there's an answer for any situation you have in God. But, but you notice how he says this, as you're being trans, as you renew your mind, you're being transformed. You become a different person from glory to glory in the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're no longer a person that's been stuck in this rut because you've been set free and you think differently. And the way you think differently, you behave differently and you become changed and people can see it in you and they'll follow that. And they'll say, I want what that person has. Uh, that, is that the God they serve? Is that the person they have? That's what, and then it says that you'll be able to prove what is the perfect will of God. The good is such the perfect will of God. Do you know God has a perfect will for each one of us? Does anybody can raise your hand and say, I know God's perfect will for me right now. I don't know. I'm walking that journey out. You only know a little bit, Scott. You need help. You don't know it. <laughs> no, we all need help. Uh, is that not good, guys? Is that not where I'm going? I, I, I did talk fast, but did I get across something? that God is good and the Holy Spirit is your friend and run to him, run to him. He, the Holy Spirit will help this Bible not be dreadful. I know you say dreadful. There's sometimes, because we've been taught that if you don't read your Bible, you're displeasing God. Read your Bible and let it become alive and you, let this word become alive. You. I got 10 of these all over. I got lines in every one of them because it's, oh, that's good. Oh, that's good because the Holy Spirit's bringing it alive in me. Let's, let's, let's just bring his glory wherever we go, amen? Let's celebrate our good father and let's celebrate it by living in his kingdom on, bringing his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, amen? Amen. Let me pray for you guys, okay? Can you guys stand up and I just pray for everybody? Father, thank you. Thank you that you're good. You are a good God and your mercy endures forever. And we thank you for great is your faithfulness. So Father, I thank you for every person in this room, Father. Every family that's represented in this room, Father. Everybody, we thank you that you're faithful to complete the good work you started in us. And we thank you, Father God, for just open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, and open our hearts to understand. Let your word come alive in our hearts. And Holy Spirit, we yield to you. We say, have your way with us today. Please join me in that. We yield to you, Holy Spirit, not me. We, we yield to you, Holy Spirit. We yield to you, Holy Spirit. We yield to you, Holy Spirit. Have your way with us today. Let us leave change from glory to glory. In your name, Jesus. Amen. God bless everybody. Hey, um, Mary and uh, um, Brittany's back there. If you guys need prayer, do not leave without prayer. Amen.